this is our dishwasher and this is our dishwasher module. In this module we're going to cover everything from starting the dishwasher to shutting it down to cleaning it and proper use of the racks and the uh, loading of the dishwasher. I hope you'll enjoy. Now as a member of our KVMC kitchen staff there's always going to be an abundance of dishes and we all wash dishes here. There's not one of us that doesn't every day do load after load of dishes as part of our job description. Doing that properly is what this training module is all about. And as much, let's get underway. So when we come into the dish room in the morning, if you're an opener, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the trap back into the washer and we're going to lower the drain lever. We're then going to activate the power switch and close the door. Almost immediately the display will say filling and it's going to run that way. You'll hear the arm spinning and water flowing. It's going to run until it fills up the machine. During that process it'll be adding soap and uh, sanitizer and be prepping itself for the first batch of dishes. Once that is done, we need to allow the water temperature to rise up above 160 degrees. Now throughout the course of the day, and you'll become familiar with our temperature chart, we must record the temperature, both the wash temperature and the rinse temperature, to ensure that we're actually sanitizing and cleaning these dishes properly. Wash temperature must always be 160 or above, and the rinse temperature must always be 180 or above. These are important temperatures and again, we'll record those on our chart. Another important process in the opening of our kitchen and our wash area is to uh, put the water to our wash arm. Now, our cold water doesn't shut off here and so we don't have to worry about the cold side. It's, it's always on, it's always ready to spray cold water. But we need hot water to properly rinse these trays and these dishes and to generally keep our area clean. So it's important that we turn this on every day and we'll turn it off every night. Within the KVMC dish room, you're going to see a shelf that has three different colored racks on it. These racks, two of which are very similar and one is very unique. The two similar racks, the, the tan and the red, have large openings in the bottom and of course fingers or prongs that are used to balance or support different things that we would wash. There are proper ways to load these and they ultimately provide the best overall wash opportunity. This third rack, which is unique, has a very tight woven bottom. It's designed as for utensils and silverware only. Uh, you can sometimes put small things that might normally fall through the holes in this in this type of rack and they will eventually come clean. See the drawback to this type of rack is that it's so tightly woven that soapy water can hardly get through there and many times if we run dirty heavily grimed or oily trays and pots and pans on this they'll come out still oily and grimy. Uh, in most kitchens these are loaded with utensils and silverware pushed through the washing machine twice and then the silverware and utensils are, are placed in a stand-up rack and they're run through again in order to actually get them clean. So, relevant to our best one practice, I highly recommend, as I do, use these two racks in order to get the best clean on everything and then use this where necessary for certain utensils and uh, certain odd things like cookie sheets or dessert trays that are relatively clean we can send through on this. We'll talk more about proper loading in just a moment. Okay, let's take our first rack and consider these trays. The best practice is simply to load the trays up in the first slot. You can fill the rack up and we always want to take our hand hose over the trap and spray them down in order to ensure that we're removing as much of the garbage and large debris stuff as we can to help from plugging up or restricting the trap within our washing machine. For our next rack, let's consider the basic pans that we use here. 
We have deep pans, shallow pans, quarter pans, half pans. We've got a ton of pans. So there are times where, in a rush, we may say, let's just throw everything we've got on the one rack, pile them on, and we'll shove somewhere under there. Let's just load it up. Okay, we're going to load it up. Okay, now I've got about seven or eight things on this rack right here. But if we start looking at it, and we have to think about the dishwasher, it's spraying water from the top, and it's spraying water from the bottom. But the question is, if, if water can't get right up to that pan, how well is it going to clean it? How well is the soap going to contact it? And if the soap and the pressure from the jet stream inside there can't contact the surface of this pan, it can't get it clean. So, the best practice, the one best practice, is to make our target the underside of every style of pan that we use. So a best loading practice for this type of rack would be to put one half pan and stagger one half pan. You're going to see they're both at an angle. The water can clearly get up inside of both of them. We've got two open spots. Let's maximize our use and we'll take these tools. We'll actually put the tools right into the uh, open grooves and we can get several different tools into these open grooves. You'll notice they overlap but they're not blocking the flow of water from them. Awesome way to load it. Let's take another rack. In this rack I've got a full size pan. Now one possibility I might think, okay, I'm going to put a full size pan. Now look. Okay, I've got two full-size pans. If I stack them, i got them both on there, right? But how does this pan get clean if that pan is blocking the water flow? It can't. So what I have to do is recognize that I can't put these two pans together. To best utilize my space, I'm going to load one pan. If I have nothing else, I'll send it through with one pan only. If I have some trays, these racks can hold two trays and a pan a full-size pan and we can get more done in this cycle. When considering racks and loading, as I said, we have the blue, the blue racks which are really great for small wares, utensils and flatware like silverware. But these racks still offer the best cleaning for even our utensils. So let's talk about that for a moment. Let's take all the utensils we have that have been scoured, and this is an important point to me. Everything that we put through on this rack, we should rub a steel wool over. I don't think that there's any point where we can just uniformly just throw everything on here, shove it in the washer and expect it all to come clean. But if we take just a moment and hit every surface, every point, with just a little pressure, very quickly, we don't have to overdo it, we're just trying to get it together get it on the rack and get it in the machine. So we load our utensils, we got all the open ends, all the parts that uh, would hold food are exposed here and we're going to maximize our space by taking a couple of small pans and loading them on as well and boom that rack is ready to go. Look we don't want to load silverware or uh, utensils onto a rack and then put a big pan on top of it. What have we done? We've removed half of the water flow that would be coming down to clean the tops of those utensils. They can't get clean if they're, if they're covered up by a pan. The pressure coming from the bottom is not enough to properly clean and or sanitize this pan or those utensils. So we're going to remove this pan and we're going to run it through in an open fashion. Now we have clean dishes. So now let's consider this rack of dishes. Having been loaded semi-properly, what's the conflict that we have here? We have multiple pans that we can see are clean. They've gotten clean, that's a great thing. The drawback to this loading is that we have these cupped utensils that we have faced up where they've trapped not only dirty water but I mean, uh, chemicals and other things are in this. That's not clean. Even if we tip it over, 
the, the debris and the stuff that was left in there makes this not a clean washing. The other challenge and very commonly found issue that I have are the sharp knives. If you notice, these knives have been dropped in so that their blades are facing up. And at certain angles, you can't even see the blade in this drawer, in this rack. And somebody reaching in would definitely end up cutting themselves or injuring themselves in a very, very painful way. So proper loading of these utensils would have said, place the bowls down on the, on the bold utensils and take the knives and always place the knife face down. Okay, another important tool in our washroom is actually our disposal and it's located in the corner here. Now the disposal you might think can just tear up everything and it does a really great job but we have a couple limitations. We have a trap outside that can become blocked so we don't put rice down there in large quantities or pasta. Now naturally when you're washing dishes or after you've dumped the pasta and the rice, there's still going to be some in the pan that must go down. But the goal is to keep out large clots or large pan loads uh, of, of rice and pasta that could potentially plug this thing up. We also want to be aware of small wares, rags, uh, measuring cups, things that might end up down in this trap. So periodically it's important to stop and actually look down in there uh, to make sure that there's nothing there. Uh, especially before you start to load it. Now once you load the, the, the waste product into the disposal, our switch is right here on the control and we're going to flip it up. We'll turn it to the second position. We're going to let it run for a little while. It's very important that we give it some time to wash itself out and chew up that debris. But we need to get that out of there. So we need to run for at least 30 to 45 seconds. switch back to the off position and in about five or six seconds it'll shut itself down and we're ready to go. Well this brings us to the end of the first part of our test module number one on the dish room. Uh, it's so much to cover that we're actually going to break it into two parts so this will be the conclusion of part A and then if you'll stay tuned you pick up the next video will be uh, module 1, Part B, which will have all the conclusion on uh, basically the chemicals and shutting down the unit. Uh, appreciate your time and I hope you learned something. Thank you.